Welcome to LAM 101. Today we'll be doing an overview of the Palo Alto Network Firewall. So to log in, you would use your default IP address if you're setting this up from scratch. So like here an example is 192.168.something.something. Um, you see that it uses an SSL certificate, so you have to use the HTTPS. And since it's all signed, your web browser is going to give you the little red lines through it. And then you're going to log in with the admin and admin as the default credentials. And then once you log in, it's going to tell you, hey, don't forget to change your password. And so from here, so once the page loads up, it takes essentially to the dashboard, which gives you some basic information here, it gives you general information about IP addresses, uh, license, what software uh, modules you have license for, also system resources telling you how the management and CPU uh, planes are running, how many sessions you currently have going through the machine. Right now I only have a handful the last people lo currently logged in, some data logs, some system logs, some config changes, and kind of a quick over assessment how your traffic is flowing in the box far as rated as risk level. You have seven tabs, you have dashboard, ACC, App Command Center is a quick overview of what's going on with your network. So by default, it gives you applications, URL content, uh, threat, data, HIPs, if you have these policies and license activated. So by default, it gives you the last hour, sessions, top 25. You can go down to the pull-down menu, choose your different settings. You can go so like the example, I'm going to go the last six hours, it's not going to change much. Hit the little plus sign. It's going to take a moment for it to update. And then it's going to update all the different things that's going on. We can sort it by bytes, sessions, and threat. And you can also view up to, 20, up to 500 different app IDs. And then you can also go add filters. So you can go by app source destination usernames if you have it all configured to use those information destinations zones and so on uh, one of the nice things about this like an example if we want to see which device has been using the ping command we can click on that and that's going to give us some information here so it's going to give us a description of the app id what ports it uses things like that the risk level and it's going to tell us the top app. So if we were sorting by IP address, it would give us all the app IDs from which machine to which machine, IPs, rules that it went in and out of, zones. So I don't have everything set up. This is just a base default setting, which is inline. So take an example. I can go around here and click on my PSN box. Now this will give you more granular detail with one machine. Now if I turn that off, we can see in the last six hours which machines have been talking to it. So it's kind of nice. You can see that we've had two different machines. You know, we had some machines talking to the device, getting out wood zones, information, things like that. So it works out really nice. You can sort by bytes. So you can have in and out. So if you, had, you want to have just the two machines, you can do source and destination, and then that'll give you a quick overview with, between the two boxes. So just to give you some quick ideas on what you can do with the App Command Center, it's a great place to give you an overview of what's going on in your network. Next, Monitor tab. Monitor tab views your log files you have traffic, threat, URL, wildfire, so on and so on. And then you also have your reporting side. So that's what Monitor does. It gives you the capability to monitor um, what I would call near time. So this refreshes in increments of 10, 30, 60 seconds or manually. So by default, it's set for 10. And then here when this is changing, that means it's refreshing and then once it stops, that means the data is now current at that point in time. 
so you can see your different zones, your IPs from where to where. And then this data would be larger depending on how sophisticated your configuration is. So like an example, if you're NATing, it'd show your NAT address uh, coming in. If you're NATing out, it would show you the NAT, the NAT IP that you're using, things like that. So it gives you a nice breakdown. You can sort by app ID. So if you want to just see only these particular ones, uh, the plug and play is an example. Now it's only going to show you which IP addresses are using that. So what's nice is this tells you what rule it's coming in and out of, if it's being allowed or blocked. You can look at your uh, ports. You can, you know, change your settings, what you want to view. Down here, you can resolve. So this will use your DNS server to resolve the current IP. So if you're looking back in history, it's not may not show you the same machine if it has a different IP address at that time. It's going to show you the IP addresses currently. So we can go from Pacific IPs, use the AND or OR. Uh, we can then just turn around and say, I don't want to use that IP ID, but I want to see everything coming from this IP. And now we can see, you know, the different app IDs, different sessions. I don't have any other settings set up, so this is all we're going to see at this point. From the monitor tab, we're going to go to the policy. So here's our rules that we have in our security. We have, we can configure our NAT rules here, our QoS rules, our policy-based forwarding rules. So if we wanted to change the flow of traffic for some reason, we could do that. So I'm just going to go through, click through one of these rules so you can kind of see what it would look like. So we have the default rule one. We have our zones. We could add multiple zones if we wanted to. Uh, users, if we had, you know, this hooked up to AD or something like that, we could then, you know, allow the rule based on users or groups, destinations from what zone, or we can go from zone with specific addresses, uh, apps. Here you can see we have the any box. From here we could just essentially, if we wanted to make this rule for a specific app ID, we could just then scroll through, select the app ID, and then from there it would only allow that specific app. Here, Again, we could set up what ports, physical ports, that we want to do. Here, we essentially choose our action. By default, when you're creating a new rule, it's by default set for allow. Here, we can set up logging. So, always want to log at the end. Uh, log forwarding, if you're sending this to a log, logging server, or the panorama, you would create that profile, use that. So, you have your different profile settings. You have your antivirus. You have your anti-spellware, URL, file blocking. Now these are different options here. It's based on what licensing you have that would be available there for you to choose from. So we're going to hit OK. And then that's pretty much it for policy at this point. Alright, next we're going to talk about the object tab. So the object tab is where we do a lot of our configuration. So here, address. So if we were going to create an address that we wanted to use, so here we would put in a, a name. So let's say our WW server, and then we're going to say maybe the IP address. Let's say our web server is dot twenty, and we can do by a couple different ways we can set this up. So we can do our address scheme, put a description in there, and then we have our different devices. So you use this for mainly for is you're going to use this for your ACLs. So you can put in your IP addresses and then group them. Um, so then we can have multiple IP addresses, then we can create a group. And let's just say for right now we have our WWE web servers. So we can go here and and then from here we can also turn around and go new and say WW 
pull one. And then let's say we want to just give it an IP address. And then from there, we have two set up in there. Same thing with regions. We can turn around, create a region. Maybe we want to have an IP address list of, you know, things that are botnets, things like that. Uh, we can create a new rule here. And then essentially we can just say, you know, botnet and same thing, just start typing IP addresses in there. Here we can view our app IDs. So here, as the app ID loads up, you can see there are different categories. We have categories, subcategories, technologies, risk, characteristics. So you can sort these different ways you want to sort them. So if we want to see media, technology, there's all the different app IDs and different categories of just media. And same thing, groups, we can make a group. So let's say maybe we want to make a, a P2P, but we want to block all, maybe we want to make a rule allow P2P or allow BitTorrent or whatever. So we can go in there and just say, you can just start typing a couple of things. So we can say there's BitTorrent and then we can go in on and on and on and add additional groups and services we can create custom services that we don't have with port numbers group them together so on so on uh, quick overview our security profile here if you have antivirus license you can create your profile for your antivirus your spam if you have vulnerability uh, you know licensing URL licensing you can go in here file blocking if you want to block files so like an example you just click add and then you can give it a name of essentially these are essentially rules and then from here you can choose any specific type of uh, you know, application app IDs detecting it. So let's say for four share, and we can add more and more. And same thing, like what type of file we want to block. So let's say ABIs for some reason, which direction up, down, or both. And then here you have essentially your different action solver. We'll log it, block, we'll block it, block, or continue just basically means that, you know, it's gonna say, sure, are you sure you wanna do this? Forward, continue and forward. So these are some of your different options that you have um, in the objects. All right, the next tab is network. So here you can see your different uh, interfaces. Essentially there can be layer one, layer two, layer three interfaces. Uh, like I said, by default, interface one and two are a V wire, which is in line. Uh, so here, like an example, we put the interface into a couple different modes. We do tap, HA, V wire, layer two, layer three, and so on. We can add different security zones to these. We can create a new zone, uh, advance. You can set up your duplex speeds, things like that. So we have our zones. So this is how the firewall works, mainly from one zone to the other, segregating. That's where we use the ACLs. So you can create your different zones. Uh, one of the things I want to show here, you can enable user user identification here. So if we have a zone that we want usernames, we want the system to, you know, gather the usernames and we would do it. So like an example, like our inside zone, we'd want to have that set up. Uh, 
from here, VLANs. So if we had any different VLANs we want to route through, our V-wire. So here's our default one. Essentially, it's just an inline environment. You can do, you know, some basic configurations here, but it's strictly a layer one. You have your routing mode. So you have, by default, you have a routing. You This supports, you know, RIP, OSPF, BGP, your multicast. So, you know, default, there is no setup. You can do your VPN tunnel. You can do DHCP. You can do your DNS proxy. You have your VPN global protect, which you can use for VPNs and, you know, your site to site VPNs and set up your QoS. So that's pretty much it for now on the network tab. Last tab, device. So the most important part is here in the device tab that I'm going to go over is the management side. Here's where you put your name, your IP addresses. So here's where you configure management. So here you have your management interface, what services you're going to allow. So like if you want the management interface to be pingable, SSH, Telnet, you know, whatever you want to you know, use. And then here you put in your IP address, your default gateway, things to get out. Um, one of the weird things is here you under services you would put your dns so if you need to get your updates for the palo alto and your time server it goes here and then under operations you have you can reboot the system shut down the system restart it you can revert uh, load previous configs save configs export configs so this is your main area here for your basic things. Your second part, uh, your license tab, 